On the table, we are talking and reviewing new dinosaurs from Jurassic World Dominion. Hey everyone, this is Dan, and thank you for watching Squirrel Stampede today as we are checking out the new Slash and Roar Gigantosaurus. What's that? That's not how you say it? Oh, okay, well we'll get Dr. Grant in here hopefully to help us out pronounce this awesome new uh, Giganoto, oh, uh, just never mind. Also, we've got two packs. There's Dr. Grant, he's gonna help us out. He comes with a Dimitri Don and Kayla Watts here with a Pyro Raptor. So new dinosaurs to learn and scan and hopefully start saying Giganogagiganotosaurus correctly. Squirrel, Squirrel Stampede. stampede. So it kind of feels like before we get on to the Gigantinotosaurus, we should check out Dr. Alan Grant and Dimitridon because hopefully Dr. Grant will help me pronounce Gigantosaurus correctly. This was a great pack to find though, as the Dimitriodon were a welcome addition to the Jurassic World Dominion movie. They were rarely if not never shown in the other Jurassic World movies, so it was great to see them. And in such a standout scene, plus we have a more aged Dr. Grant action figure to look at. Over on the back of the box, Dr. Grant seems to be pescering a poor Demetriodon with the skull of another Demetriodon, and or he is sneaking off with it, it's kinda hard to say. I wonder if he likes to use that skull now to scare little kids like he used to do with the raptor claws back in the old days. You see, first he slices you here, here, and here. Then it grabs you by the groin here. Oh, oh, Alan. Then, it does a body slam. Then, it will latch onto your side again. The point is, you will be alive as it starts eating you. So, show a little respect here, okay? Anyhow, let's get these two out of box. And there we are with the two out of package, pretty much as they are seen in package, as most of these are pretty easily seen uh, just sitting on the outside of their package. Huh? And the two figures outside of the box looking pretty much like they did inside the box. We have our Demetria Don here, pretty tall, a fairly tall dinosaur for a short dinosaur. What? It's large neural spine sail about the height of Dr. Grant, or maybe just a little more. We all know Dr. Grant uses his hat to heighten, too. Dimitridon. Whoa, Alan, that hat makes you look really tall. Why, thank you kindly, ma'am. Dimitridon. Dr. Grant currently tormenting the poor Demetrodon with a skull here. Let's just set that aside for a second and look a little closer. We have a little older, field-weathered, steamed Dr. Grant here. This time wearing a comfy jacket, a nice leather or heavy warmed canvas field jacket. He of course still has his signature hat, but a little more grayer on the beard and like the other figures, pretty well articulated all over the place. More importantly though, we've got the Demetriodon here. Look at there, nice and shiny. Huh? A muddy greenish sage body with a very orange sail on its back. Somewhere here, we're going to have to find its dino DNA code. I'm not sure where they're hiding it yet, if it's even there. It's done up pretty well though. Very nice looking realistic sculpt for a dinosaur. As for articulation, what do we have? We've got a head there with Opening and closing jaw, I wonder. There it is, it's held down pretty well underneath that overbite there. Then we've got rotation on the neck with a little bit of a lever there too. Good movement for good positioning. We've got shoulder joints that rotate around and it's kind of hard to get those front feet flattened down but there they are and back legs also on hips that rotate just enough to kind of maybe do a little bit. They're a little bit kind of flat to the ground as is. I wonder if the coat, there it is, it's right on the back of its sail. There's the code. I was not sure about that, but it's hidden in the back of the sail. So pretty good little action figure. Again, so rare to see the Demetriodon. You could even pick up a few of these packs and have a nice little family if you wished. And of course, don't forget about his Uncle Ed there. What? He's not looking so good. 
Okay, now that Dr. Grant is out, he can help me pronounce Giganotosaurus. As you can see, I have been pronouncing it wrong since we had opened the super colossal Giganotosaurus. For some reason, I don't know why, I was thinking gigantic. When in fact, Dr. Grant, what is it? Why, Dan? Giganotosaurus. Giganotosaurus? Giga, huh? How did I mess that up? Let's just not talk to the Indominus Rex, okay? So we have the Strike and Roar Giganotosaurus today. And this may be one of the most squirreliest of dinosaur builds from Mattel. Look at this torso section. What is going on here? This guy is way wiggly. I hear gears, I hear stomach contents swirling about. This guy is just intensely weird, but it should be fun to look at. It has two prominent features for strike and roar, and those are, of course, strike and roar, and maybe chomp. You can see some of the button work back here on its sail, on its spikes, and you can see already how it twists about by pressing down this main back spine feature. It really is going to rock about this center torso in such a squirrely way. Look at that, I'm kind of rocking it back and forth now. And it spins it even. It rotates and spins. It's kind of unpredictable too. You're not really sure which way it's going to spin. Right now it's kind of spun to the right, and now he's kind of spun over to the left. By the way, for the moment I have the Giganotosaurus as a male, but probably female, right? Traditionally, all the dinosaurs of Jurassic Park and World are female, except for maybe the Indoraptor? I don't know, I get this always off. So I may be jumping back from male to female on Giganotosaurus today. So the primary sail button would be there. I think this is our DNA code right there, hidden just below that. And I believe there is another button. Oh, there it is. Right below her hips. Let's open up. And the Giganotosaurus has been removed from box. Pretty impressive. This one is scaled a little better to your regular action figure collection of Jurassic World dinosaurs versus the super colossal, a little bit oversized super colossal. This Giganotosaurus will fit better with the other dinosaurs you collect from the line of Jurassic World. Maybe you could say just a little bit on the small size, but a little more workable nonetheless. She's kind of in a muddy green sage color too, very close to what we saw with the Demetrodon. Maybe actually one of the more poorer painted dinosaurs of the collection. Mostly the whole body is this sage green. There's not really an underbelly color. Maybe a slight? Nah, I don't really think there's an underbelly color there. And then a darker forest green where going down her spines and splotted a little bit, camouflaged throughout. I would say probably one of the least inspiring paint jobs with that. At least they got the claws painted there and the face sculpt there is pretty well. They've got a nice yellow eye and some teeth and probably opening up those pearly whites. Look at there, we've got kind of a bland pinkish tongue in there. I'm also seeing some just plastic stress marks here and there. I don't think it's paint apps. I see some plastic stress here, some stress there, here and there. I don't know, maybe from being bumped around in the package, the green plastic had a tough time with it. So not the best painted dinosaur of this series, but still really cool to see. As for articulation on the Giganotosaurus, other than the action feature, we do have rotation on these arms up at the joint, top shoulder joint there. And we should have hip movement Looks like on a nice clicky ratchet to help stand it. Sometimes these pull out. I don't think they are. You can see her speaker right there on its belly. I'm going back and forth with her and him again. And feet that rotate. And a tail that has all sorts of hinge work going on. Kind of incorporated with a strike and roar. Now that we're out of box, we can more correctly check out the Giganotosaurus's action feature of the strike and roar. So again, it all involves this main back spine here.
as when you press in, she is going to rock around quite ferociously, but not as ferocious as Strike and Roar Dr. Sattler. Alan, run! <laughs> Now that we're free from the box, you can just see the rotational value around this central torso abdomen area. It looks kind of funny the way it is. It's like a shell of this dinosaur eating this part of the dinosaur as it connects together, giving it this crazy full range of motion. If you press slowly, you get a nice round attack, if I can get it there. There we go. You get a little more leverage by pressing closer to the spine up top than in the back. That's a little bit trickier here, so press your thumb here, you get a little more leverage. And if you do it slowly, she'll rock around slowly. If you do it quickly... She'll rock around more quickly, and if you go real quickly, sometimes you can see that mouth open up and snap a little bit. But to really get the mouth to open more, use the button down below under her hips. And use that. And use that in tandem with the top button. Wow, she is pretty loud. Those are some great sound effects on her. So maybe not the best painted dinosaur, but one of the most visually vocal dinosaurs we've got today. I'm hearing multiple sounds too, not sure how many are really embedded in there, but she's quite a bit of fun to play with. Trying to find a dinosaur that most reminds me of this feature, we had this Tyrannosaurus Rex, and I'm trying to recall which one was this one, but it also had kind of this torso deal with the body Giving, creating a nice hinged region there. Not as squirrely as the Giganotosaurus today though. So let's do a quick scale comparison as best as I can do with the super colossal Giganotosaurus, I think I will still call it. Absolutely huge, filling up the whole screen and bringing out our new regular sized Giganotosaurus scale you can kind of see a little bit smaller about half the length maybe just a little bit less really taking up a lot of screen here uh, actually the mega super colossal painted better look at that actually has the belly underbelly a sandy color no sandy color here which is funny because usually you get a little more detail out of the uh, action figure scale figures the super colossals are just so huge they can't do too much paint app, but it won the war there. Of course, it didn't get his paws clawed. Uh, this one did get his paws painted, so a little bit of difference between the two, but you can see now what you're looking at as this one's rocking back and forth. Uh, they're just so big overall. Both of them are pretty huge. Ugh. So a pretty fun dinosaur to check out if you can find her. A little bit better scale again than the Super Colossal will fit a little bit better in storage and on display and on eating action figures too. We'll get to the codes in just a second. Let's check out Kayla Watts and the Pyroraptor first. They're over here. That's our first time looking at a Pyroraptor. Good to see some more action figures today like Dr. Grant and Kayla. They go so heavy on the dinosaurs and how they forget about the actors in the movie. The Pyroraptor certainly looks interesting in the box here. What does we have on the back? Pyroraptor and Kayla and a Scanda code. Let's open up and see how this raptor stands. And it's Pyroraptor and Kayla Watts. I think the scale between the two looks pretty good. The Pyroraptor is certainly ready to jump and chow down on poor Kayla. She's got her little dino taser though, so I think she'll be okay. Pretty nice looking raptor toy though, maybe a little deeper red than I would have liked. A little brighter would have been fun. You can see her feathery plumage tail there, and a little bit of feathery plumage coming from the top of her head and down under her arms there. Right now in a pretty much I'm definitely going to attack you stance, uh, for articulation we can open and close jaws there, rotate arms at the shoulder point, 
head rotation there on the neck, uh, hips up there up top, they do not move out about. And then uh, tail there is rotatable, but I don't know why you would want to do that. It would look kind of silly. And of course, I think I spy a scan code there somewhere on the back. See if we can get our fingernail under there. It's a little tight. Yep, there indeed is our DNA scan code. As for Kayla, I think they did pretty good on her action figure, a little bit better than what Lego did with their minifigure. Her head sculpt seems pretty well done. I can see her face in there. Although again, maybe a little bit bland on her jacket and shirt. I think she had a little more flair going on with what she was wearing. More patches and visual striking things. But again, super awesome to see characters in the movie represented in action figure form. We've got several more to go. I hope they keep producing more. Okay, we can load up our Jurassic World Dominion app here, which has been combined with the other apps from the past. I think I may have said things wrong earlier. You can still find everything inside. You just have to look around for your older dinosaurs. Uh, this just mainly features the Dominion cast up front here. Uh, right now, Dinosaur of the Week, who do we have? Oh no, Dan, good luck saying this one. A little help here, Dr. Grant. Grant is indicating he does not know aquatic creatures as much. This is maybe the Liopleurodon, maybe. Did I say that correctly? Underwater there. Very kind of maybe Mosasaurus-esque, but a little bit smaller. A lot smaller, probably. Pretty cute. Lots of great new dinosaurs in here. Okay, so let's do a scan on our Pyroraptor. See what we can discover. Oh, there's the head of our Giganotosaurus. All right, here, see what we got. That was quick. That grabbed on quick. The new scan codes must be easier to read. There's the Pyroraptor. A little more orangish red here in the animation, which I kind of wish we had saw with the action figure. A little more, a little more exaggerated would have been fun on the figure. There she is. These are very plasticky in the animation, the way they feel. It's almost like you're looking at the action figure alive and instead of a dinosaur. Uh, there she is though. I love the little fly that flies around. As for information, oh, that's the augmented reality thing. We'll skip that. It's a little harder to do on our table here. Uh, oop, I lost her. Where'd she go? There she is. Uh, where's our facts? Okay, so there we go again. Look at that. The uh, human there on this picture looks even larger than what Kayla does to the action figure there. Diet of meat, weight of one dog, I would say two. The Pyroraptor looked certainly larger than that. And found over there in Europe. So there is a little information there. I wish they would do a little more uh, bio like they used to with the, some of the facts. But we don't see that really anymore. Uh, use the app. Oop, I don't really need to do that. Um, ah, okay, so let's just move on. So again with the Dimitridon back in the sale there, we can find its code and give it a scan here. That is so incredibly fast, it just locks in. That is so handy. And there's our Dimitridon. Such an interesting dino with this one. Look at the pretty sun over the water in the background. Nice little added effect. Really interesting one this one is. So low to the ground. A nice cooling sail to keep its temperature regulated on the back there and or to give a T-Rex uh, some flavorful chips for dinner time. Very nice looking from all around. Little mosquitoes flying about. And information. So there we go, a little bit shorter there than a human standing. The sail really kind of comes up to the height of a human head there, maybe five to six feet tall. A diet of meat and the weight of a large pig. And oh boy, found all over. So found in Europe, found in North America, found in uh, Texas area maybe, Central Central America over there. So a lot of different spots uh, to find your Dimitridon. All right, so let's find our Giganotosaurus and scan in, excuse me, Kayla. See if we can find our code up on the back, back behind the spines. And a quick scan, let's see how fast this grabs. Look at that, incredibly fast. And we've got our Giganotosaurus. Did we see one before with the super glossal? I'm already forgetting. Uh, this one, kind of in a shady, foresty, pine tree grove 
eating some are uh, wanting to eat something because I'm sure a dinosaur of this scale is going to really want to eat a lot. Look at that head. It's just breathing there up and down. It must take a lot of energy to fuel this guy. It is so huge. What a great looking dinosaur. What do we have for some information? So there we go. It's quite large. I think the image isn't perfectly matched though. That human there looks pretty big. Very close to the action figure scale again. It looks certainly much larger on a movie screen. Diet of meat and the weight of one, two, three, four, five, six cars. Interesting choice of just a regular car there. Found it down in South America. One of the largest theropods to uh, really uh, put up against the T-Rex there. Absolutely stunning and fun to find. Cool. And there we have today's discoveries of Jurassic World Dominion dinosaurs from Mattel. This wave just recently hitting store shelves here in August 2022. If you're looking for all three, they should be popping up pretty well. I found these over at Target, and they are great to include into your Jurassic World Dominion and or any Jurassic World and or any dinosaur collection. And what do you think about the Giganotosaurus of this scale and of this strike and slash quite the uh, action feature on this dude? Plus a couple great action figure combo packs never disappoint. If you like today's video, please give us a squeak, a squirrelib, and a squamant, your favorite new dinosaur of today, or maybe one that's not been shown yet. We will see. Thank you so much for watching. That's what I have to say about that. Alan, run.